Well, another fine morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for stopping by Sandy Bottom Homestead. And I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day because it is planting season. And I'm trying to catch you guys, this kind of slipped my mind before, but this is one thing that has really prevented a lot of issues in my garden. I don't want to say it makes you successful because that's not necessarily true. I guess a roundabout way it does but it eliminates me having to deal with as much disease and pests and stuff like that. And I'm going to show you how I do crop rotation because it's, it's the unsung hero of the garden, in my opinion. So the garden is packed, 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 packed. And you can see that we've got things planted. And I hope in the times that you've been watching this video, you've kind of grasped my planting style. And that's really, I like to, for the most part, monocrop each bed, at least family plant each bed, like this tomato or tomato, this garlic and um, onion bed. So, you know, just keeping that in mind, this is a very good way to start. It took me a long time to do this. And before I really get into that though, we need to talk about why we should be doing crop rotation. So crop rotation is simply not planting the same plant or really family in the same spot in consecutive years. Um, there's a lot of people that say you have to do it every year, you have to rotate. There's some people that say every two years, every three years. I just like to, for the most part in my space, I like to do it every year to an extent it's to rotate things around. So I'm going to show you how we've rotated and I'm going to explain to you my planting plan and how I do it. And I'm also going to tell you how I justify in my head, not rotating one year and my thoughts behind that. First and foremost, we need to just take a step back and look at the whole garden. This is the main garden. We have the wild garden over there not worried about that one per se because I can only focus on one at a time so what I want to do is I'm just going to go through these five beds one two three four five these are new for this year so they do not count but I'm going to go in and tell you what I had in them last year to the best of my recollection um, I have to check the planter app to see where if I'm correct or not but in this bed I know we had a full bed of squash so there was squash in this bed and then in this bed, we had potatoes that turned into Brussels sprouts. In this bed, we had onions that turned into tomatoes. And then in this bed, we had, well, here you go, case in point. We had lettuce that turned into sweet potatoes. And in this bed back here, we had kind of a smithering of uh, nightshades. So I had husk tomatoes and a couple, I believe it was peppers in this bed as well. You're probably like, Ben, where are your tomatoes? Well, because I wanted to kind of do a hardcore rotation last year, I put them in the wild garden, just kind of out of the way completely. And this applies to containers too. So in the containers behind me, I had tomatoes in them last year. So except for the one in the front, can't even remember what was in the front, but I know there's a tomato going into it this year. How's that? So you can see that we definitely have, I mean, you can just look at the garden right now. I said onions, do you see onions? No, but this is why I also decided to add in two more beds into my garden because of the amount of food that we produce and we grow, it would eliminate a lot of friction into our rotation plan. So this will help with that. And that's why I did it because immediately I could just plant my onions over there and kind of continue in that path. So typically what I do is for instance, we had squash here, guess what? Squash here next year or this year. And then guess what? Next year squash. And so we're going to kind of rotate around year by year. I'm trying to get myself into the muscle memory to just move over a bed each year totally eliminates it completely now you're probably like well hey you said you had lettuce in this bed this year and you had it in there last year you're right bed had lettuce in it but it had lettuce on this side of the bed and then i had cabbage on this side of the bed so there's rutabaga on this side lettuce on this side 
it's doing fine. Clearly, there's no disease. There's not even any pests on it at all. I guess it's gonna be windy today, so I'm gonna to have to dance around the wind, so I apologize. But you can see that next year and this fall, I will not plant lettuce in this bed again. So this bed will be done with lettuce for at least a year, probably two, especially now that I have these other beds in here that I can use. I thought I stepped on a piece of dog poop. It was just a sweet gumball. Whew. I was hoping my dog's not crapping in the middle of the garden. That'd make me a little upset. So you can see how it works. Now we come over to this bed, which is, I don't know how, I don't know the correct term for it. I'm just gonna call it diversely planted where there's multiple plants. Now, there are uh, two forms of brassicas in here. There's kale and there's cabbage. So these play well together, same family. We'll rotate them out and then we have the spinach in the front. Next year, it won't be the same. Now, the one thing that makes it difficult for me is I like to plant sweet potatoes. Matter of fact, I don't like to, I love to, but I like to plant them in the front of the beds. So I like to put it in this front bed so they can just grow free. And so the goal is that next year, so I had them in that one, this year I'll put them in this one, next year I'll put them in that one, and then here's a little preview of what may happen in the future. If this garden stays here, then I'll put them over there. If this garden moves, then I'm just gonna go back and forth each year in the front beds. And that's how I like to run my sweet potatoes. I like to give them plenty of space. I don't like to cut the grounds, anything like that. And because I'm dancing around the wind, I'm sure you're getting nauseous watching me turn around. Sorry, I'm getting nauseous too. But think about it this way. Perfect world, let's say I didn't give myself any limitations. And let's just focus on cabbage. I put cabbage here this year, cabbage here next year, cabbage here next year, cabbage here the next, cabbage here the next, cabbage here the next, and cabbage here. I mean, you've got six years Am I, am I doing my math right? Roughly six years until it gets back into that original bed. Plenty of time, plenty of time for rotation. And the thing with rotation is if you plant the same plant over time, your pests will get used to it and they'll basically just set up colonies. A lot of times like squash bugs is a real issue with squash bugs. Um, you know, the cabbage moth, all that stuff. They, they get to know where the crops are. So that's why we rotate them. And this eliminates me having to treat as much, like so far this year, because I had a pretty good rotation going on, I have not had any pests. And usually by this time of the year, it is bad. So we haven't had any cabbage moss. We've got very few aphids. They always happen in the greenhouse. It's a confined space. It happens. Um, I'm curious to know how, how are you dealing with your, not dealing, but what kind of pests are you dealing with right now? And are they really bad? Because it just seems like it has not been good, not been bad. And it makes me worried for summer. And that's why I really want to up the ante on my rotation as well. So the other thing is disease. So here we've got a little bit of white mold. If I just keep planting the same crops over and over in this bed, that mold will persist and it will take over the whole bed eventually and you won't be able to grow in it. So we're going to remove this plant out of there completely. We're going to clean it up, move the soil that it touched, and then we won't plant those plants in here again. Because once you get a disease set in, it can be years before you can plant that same plant in there. Case in point. And this is one place that I do struggle and I'm trying to hammer it down. Last year with my green beans, we got mosaic virus on this trellis. You can see they're still up here. Never really amounted to anything, kind of was a bummer. Did a piss poor job managing it, that was my fault. And what I typically done is rotated every year, this bed, that bed, this bed, that bed. Well, now because the mosaic virus is here, I can't plant green beans here for years. So I'm gonna probably do green beans here this year. And then next year, I'm not gonna do them on this trellis because it's still the same soil and it's touching. So then the next year I'm gonna do that trellis. Actually, I take that back. This year I'm gonna do that trellis. Then I'm gonna do something in this trellis the following year, then if everything goes good, I think this year with cucumbers, I'm gonna test this back trellis to see if it gets enough sun because this is a real shady part of my garden. 
and then we can come back here. So technically we're gonna have three to four years before we come back to the original spot and it should be enough, should be. So there is that to think of. And you have to think too, that accounts just because I'm using trellising green beans, it's the same with bush green beans. I can't put them in the same bed. And not only that, but I need to also make sure that whatever is susceptible to mosaic virus doesn't go back in there because I'm just making it worse each year. And to me, diseases are the scariest part of gardening because you can't really see them and it's hard to diagnose them. So I try to just eliminate disease completely. And some of them just really freak me out. Now, this is why I monocrop my beds at most. And at minimum, I try to family plant them. So monocropped, all taters, family plant, onions and garlic. And the reason why is because it just makes it so much easier for me to rotate. It's so much easier for me to take care of the needs of each individual plant, meaning all of these taters right here, they all need the same treatments. They all need to get the same pests. They all need the same fertilizer. There's just no real worry about it. So we're gonna take that and then same here. It's because they're the same family, they generally have the same needs and desires and problems. It's gonna eliminate a lot of stress on your part. It'll make it a lot easier on you. Now I'm not telling you that you've got a monocrop to be successful. Don't think that. That's the path that I chose because one, I like it and two, it's easier for me to know how much of a crop I'm gonna get. So I know in this bed, like if it, anything like last year, I got 45 pounds out of uh, potatoes out of this bed. So this year I should get about 45 pounds out of there versus how much am I gonna get per row? How much am I gonna get per plant or anything like that? Spacing is just fine. Video coming up on that. So spacing is just fine, no issues there. Same over here with the onions. Now this one's a little bit different, but I made the decision to do this for multiple reasons. One, I don't need a lot of kale. Two, I didn't need a whole lot of cabbage. And three, I wanted to just see if I could do spinach in the spring. Typically does better for me in the fall. And then that way I could kind of get a smithering of it all. So you can see how this will work. Now, if we come over to the wild garden, you can see we've done mostly the same thing where we've monocropped carrots, but at different times. So we've got our fall planting and our spring planting of carrots. And then we've monocropped our um, potatoes again. And then here is just a smithering of like radishes, turnips and beets and stuff like that. Same families, same type of crop, root crops, need the same kind of treatment. And the one thing that made me think about this was corn. So corn, which by the way is gonna go in the second bed in the back, is a crop that needs to have a lot of fertilizer and needs to be grown in big blocks. And so a four by eight bed's not a big block, but it's as big as a block as I'm gonna give it for pollination purposes. So if I do that, then it kind of clears me up to worry about instead of like trying to throw in a row of corn or something like that, it almost, I don't wanna say guarantee in this because guarantee is not really the right term, but just hang with me here. It almost guarantees the elimination of a failure point for that crop. Meaning pollination is a big issue. And if I do grow the corn in a big block, then I can eliminate that as being an issue. And then I can really worry about watering, fertilizing and pests. And because they're all grown together, it's something that just kind of works easier. And that's how I like to do my garden. So over the years, I have done fewer and fewer beds like this front one and more like the other ones. And it's probably gonna continue in that because it's just easier for me to manage on a scale like this. And this isn't even a big garden. I know some of you guys have gardens bigger than mine. So making it so you can really work it out and get to a manageable size and a manageable planting load is really gonna help you with that. And crop rotation fits right into it because it just eliminates a lot of effort across the board. Good.